Welcome back to How to Souls. My name is Rach and today we're going to look at how to get the Drake Sword in Dark Souls 1. This is a ridiculously powerful item at the very very start of the game and all you need to do is progress past the Tauros Demon boss to where the Hellkite Drake is, here on the bridge leading to the Undead Parish. So there's our boy, right there. So if we head down and open this shortcut, because we will need to make a little backtrack. Before you spend all the souls that you've just gotten from Tauros, you will need to use some of them to buy a bow and some arrows. Depending on how high your dexterity is, you might also need to raise that a little bit. So in this character, this was quite a low level character, so I don't quite have enough dexterity. We're going to need to raise that to 12 for this. And that is the amount of dexterity we need, um, as well as 7 in strength, but we're good for that for now, uh, to wield a short bow. However, you will need 16 strength and 10 dexterity anyway to use the Drake Sword. Essentially, we're going to be shooting the dragon's tail. If we shoot it enough, it will break off and we can use it as a weapon. So we're going to head down here in the Undead Burg over to the Undead Merchant, who is just behind these two spear-wielding dudes. Uh, so we will buy from him a short bow here. Like I said, it needs 7 strength and 12 dexterity to use, so you do need to make sure you have that. Okay, now that we have the short bow, we're going to need to buy some arrows. Depending, it will depend on your amount of dexterity for how many arrows you'll have to buy. However, I recommend getting more than you think you will need. <laughs> 15 more points of damage for essentially five times the amount of souls, to me, just doesn't seem worth it. So I tend to go for the standard arrows. I'm gonna buy about 100 of them just because I will use them for the rest of the game. And you don't wanna scrimp out, get 20 arrows, and then find out you need 25. It's just a waste of souls at that point. So now that we've done our shopping, we're ready to head to the Hellkite Drake and start cutting off this tail. Okay, so for this, we're gonna go under the bridge here where you can see a nice view of the dragon's tail. There is a hollow soldier over here that we're just gonna take out. Okay, so with that guy down, we're gonna position ourselves near the second pillar, just in the middle of the bridge here with a nice view of the dragon's tail. About here or so, just in the middle here. Equip our bow, make sure your arrows are equipped too, just there. Uh, Two-hand it. What I quite like to do is I like to aim for the top bit of this battlement here because you're going to hit the thick part of the tail. Okay, so we wait for the tail to line up with our crosshair. Get an arrow in there. The tail will actually appear for a second time in front of you so you can get a second arrow off there. I estimate it's probably going to take about 30 arrows so I'll probably speed up this footage. But I'll let you see just a couple times here. You just let the arrow go, get another one knocked, and then as soon as you see the tail, let it go. So you can get two arrows in the tail per cycle. You don't have to move at all. All you have to do is sit and press RB. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend these type of weapons for a first playthrough because I do believe this game is designed to kick your ass right at the beginning. And learning to deal with that type of stuff right from the beginning is what basically gets you the skills for the rest of the game. So if you look at it that way, it's kind of like you don't want to lean on a crutch too early. But if you are just looking to appreciate this game's majesty for its world and its creature design and stuff like that, then here's an easier way to get through the first section. All right, that's us got the Drake sword. Hellkite is just chilling up there on the bridge. No longer swinging his tail, of course, because it's now in our bags. So we still need to get past him. So if you're interested in how to get past him, I have made a video on my opinion, the easiest way to get past the Hellkite Drake and to get yourself a bonus bonfire to boot. So be sure to check out that one. I've got a card for it in the, in the top corner there. But for now, we're going to take a look at the Drake Sword. So here we have the Drake Sword. So as you can see here, these symbols mean uh, it's got 200 base damage. So if you compare that to my little hand axe, it's insane. It is three times the weight, but it's nothing we can't deal with. It's only six units. Please bear in mind that this weapon is so powerful because of its base damage. So that means it's very powerful in the start of the game when you have low, low stats. But as you progress around to, I would say you could use this happily until about Sen's Fortress kind of time. Uh, but certainly I would look to replace it definitely before you go to Anor Londo. 
So what I mean by this is the sword doesn't have any scaling. So it has high base damage just by itself, but it does not give you any bonus damage the more strength and dexterity you have, like a lot of weapons. If we look, for example, at a dagger here, it has a B scaling in dexterity, which means the more dex you have, the more damage the weapon is going to do. So as you get through the game, especially if you're leveling up a lot of uh, melee stats like strength and dex, you're going to look for weapons that do have a B scaling, A scaling or S scaling. So the Drake Sword is very good at low stats, but not good at all at high stats. The Drake Sword and other uh, tail weapons cut from dragons upgrade with dragon scales and there are a few places you can find these. I am going to make a separate video on this um, so you can check that one out. This sword can go as high as plus five which means it will do 300 damage which is not to be sniffed at, that's a lot of damage. Now this weapon does have a relatively high strength requirement for how early in the game you are and I at the minute, I only have 14 and it requires 16 to use. So when I try to equip it, it says I have insufficient strength to wield it with one hand. However, I can hold it with both hands uh, to use it effectively. So as you can see in my UI there, it's got a cross through it, meaning if I do try and attack with it, it's not going to be very effective. It's going to do like one or two damage and have a hilariously exaggerated, like staggered attack animation. However, if I two hand it, it's going to attack no bother. Uh, the cool thing about this weapon, other than obviously the massive damage, is that it does have a special attack that we're going to try out just on this spear bro here. So if you press the R2 button with it two-handed, it has like a sort of projectile attack, which is really, really cool. However, be aware if you just use this, if you spam this willy heckin' nilly, um, it does affect the durability on the weapon really quickly. So you can see there durability is already down to 270 out of 360. Uh, so don't spam this, but it is really useful for places like this where you have the spear bro on a tiny bridge and that's often quite difficult to deal with. But yeah, that is the Drake sword. It is really that easy to get and it's super, super fun to play with. Enemies that once took three hits to go down now go down in one hit and it just is so satisfying for a game that's been kicking your arse up till now to finally get a little bit of payback. So thank you very much for watching. I wish you good luck in your Dark Souls adventure and I will see you in the next video.